Slavery was an abomination, and if you read about the terrible things done to slaves, it's hard not to cry. But today's debate isn't about whether or not slavery was bad or good, it's about whether the West should pay reparations for slavery. Which West ought to pay? The Portuguese who brought the slaves, the Dutch who provided the boats, the British who provided the insurance, the Portuguese, Spanish, and French who ran the largest colonies? And what of the African people who sold their brothers and sisters in exchange for guns, allowing them to grow their own kingdoms? Then there's Brazil. Is it part of the West? Of the 12 million Africans that were shipped across the Atlantic, Brazil received nearly 5 million of them. So why are we only discussing whether the West should pay for reparations for slavery? Hard to come up with an answer. So let's put aside the complexities of who might pay for these reparations and turn our minds instead to who might be the specific recipients of the money. What I want to know is, what am I going to get out of this? I mean, after all, I'd quite like a new car. Perhaps I could upgrade my flat and get something nice just off the corner of Oxford Street. And I'm definitely entitled. Yes, sorry, my parents come from the Caribbean. My mother is black Jamaican. But then my father, well, he doesn't really come from slaves. He's Indo-Caribbean from Guyana. Of course, his people were indentured servants. When slavery was abolished, Indians were taken to the Caribbean to take the place of the slaves who had been freed. Somebody had to do the work. My father's family lived in the same huts as the slaves once did, were tied to the same families as the slaves once were. Just instead of my father's grandparents being bought and sold, instead it was their contract of indenture that was bought and sold and obligated them to work for the time period set by their owners. The conditions were horrific. My illiterate grandmother might have told you all about this herself had the poverty and environment that engulfed Indian indentured laborers in the Caribbean not been so grotesque that she died when my father was only six years old. But I'll forget that story, because my father's mother and their people weren't slaves, and that isn't going to deliver me the cash, is it? I'll stick with my black Jamaican mother. Not sure what we do with people like Kamala Harris, one of the candidates for the Democratic nomination in the US presidency. Her mother is from India, her father is from Jamaica. Her father admits that his family owned slaves. Does she get a piece of the pie? Barack Obama is black, but his mother is white and descends from slave owners, like so many mixed race people. So do they get half payments instead of full payments? How is this all meant to work anyway? I'll tell you one way in which it might work. There are various websites out there Right now, in 2019, this is mainly an American thing, where black people are getting white people to donate money for, to them, you know, in the guise of reparations. So I'll read out one of these sites to you. It's a real site run by a black American woman who right now is collecting cash from white people because of reparations owed to her. So there are instructions for black people and for white people here. So for black people in the audience, listen up. Number one, if you are black and a descendant of chattel slavery, please put your PayPal, Vemno, and or cash app in the comments of this post. Number two, you do not have to plead your case or share why you are participating. Being black is enough. So black people in the audience, you want some extra money to go out on the weekend? Just get your PayPal information on there. Now, white people, these are the guidelines. Number one, realizing that you have white privilege or that you are inherently racist is not sufficient, okay? It's not sufficient to recognize that you have white privilege. Take action that gives your power away, white people. So right now, think of that action. What's it gonna be? Number two, this is not a substitute for reparations from the government. This should be every politician's platform. Are you demanding this from them, white people? Are you writing to your local MP and demanding reparations? Number three, you can give $1, $5, $10, $50, $100, $1,000, $10,000, $10, whatever works for you, little smiley face. So you can give this young woman $10,000 and get rid of your white guilt. Now. This young woman leaves out of the equation that slavery isn't just black and white. The first point is that everyone had slaves, okay? People of all colors became slaves for economic reasons, because of war, because slavery, as odious as it was, was simply a normal way of life. Arabs were extracting millions of black Afri African slaves centuries before Christian nations did, for about 13 centuries, compared to the three centuries European nations ran the Atlantic slave trade. Arabs marched African slaves across the Sahara Desert, and as such, they died more often. It was customary to castrate them, and many died from this practice. The Arabs also enslaved over one million white European Christians. The term slavery, in fact, comes from the word Slav. 
the Slavs inhabited Eastern Europe and were taken by the Muslims of Spain in the, 19, in the ninth century. Not to mention that Africans had been enslaving each other for thousands of years. The point is that slavery, the, the second point is that slavery was not about race, and that's important. It was not about race. The only reason we think it's about race is because philosophers like David Hume in the 18th century ranked human beings and put Africans at the bottom, saying that they had no souls. The Enlightenment imposed the concept of race on a practice that had been going on for centuries in order to justify that practice. And why did they have to justify it? And this is the point. Because people in the West began to question slavery's moral validity. The fact is that people of all colors own slaves, both as part of the Atlantic slave trade and outside of it. In the United States and Caribbean, black people, black people owned thousands of black slaves, and so did the Native Americans. Nearly 20,000 of the Native American five civilized tribes sided with the Confederacy during the Civil War, fighting to keep slavery alive. 28% of the black population who were free in New Orleans pledged their support to the Confederacy. All of the 13 southern states of the Confederacy had substantial numbers of black slave owners. There were more than 250,000 free blacks, and nearly 4,000 of them were slave masters, who owned more than 20,000 slaves. The practice of slavery was legal, after all. We need to remember that governments did not own slaves. Slave owners did. In fact, the US government fought a war to end slavery. How much should the descendants of the 400,000 Union soldiers who lost their lives fighting to free the slaves pay to the descendants of the slaves they freed? It's bizarre to suggest that human beings should inherit the outrage of the deeds of their parents. Should the child born from a rapist be branded a rapist because of his father's criminality? Should the child of a mass murderer be sent to prison because of his father's crime? No. In America, in the main, it was the Democrats who owned slaves, and the Democrats who in the main passed and enforced Jim Crow laws. It was also the Democrats who founded the Ku Klux Klan. Should the current Democratic Party be held responsible for this? No, we do not inherit the sins of our fathers. Aside from the fact that it would be simply impossible to make reparations work in any sensible or practical way, one must ask whether it would be helpful to the people one is trying to help. And this is key, because we assume that reparations are going to help them. Giving people lump sums of money does not work. Economists often point to the Georgia Land Lottery of 1832, in which parcels of land were distributed randomly. What happened to the descendants of those who were lucky enough to be given this land? Are they the richest families in Georgia? No. In fact, within one generation after the distribution of the Georgia land, one could not distinguish between those who had been given land and those who hadn't. Certainly my own direct experiences of working for 20 plus years in the inner city with families on welfare demonstrates this time and time again. Rather than give a man a fish, it is always better to teach him how to fish. All giving the fish does is make the giver feel better. Reparations might relieve white people of their guilt, but it will do little else. So back to my initial question. Why are we only discussing whether the West should pay reparations for slavery? Because while slavery was common to all civilizations, only one civilization developed a moral revulsion against it, very late in its history, Western civilization. Not even the leading moralists in other civilizations rejected slavery at all. Rather than be ashamed as Westerners, we should stand proud for having led the world out of a mentality where slavery was the norm. 